Now another in our series of reports on the 10 years since 9-11. This one focuses on efforts to prevent another domestic attack and the effect that has had on American civil liberties. NPR and the Center for Investigative Reporting have been looking into that issue. The reporter is NPR's Daniel Zwerdling. You're looking at the front line of America's war on terror, the Mall of America near Minneapolis, one of the biggest malls in the country. The mall has created its own private counterterrorism unit, and they look out for what they call suspicious persons. And now, meet one of those suspicious persons. My name is Brad Kleinerman. I live in Avon, Connecticut, and I'm a human resources director for Cigna Healthcare. Kleinerman had to visit Minneapolis three years ago, and he dropped by the mall to buy his youngest son a watch. A man approached me and introduced himself as being from All America Security. It turns out they'd been tailing him for 10 minutes they called in other security guards and began interrogating him. What I'd been doing, why I was in Minnesota, where I was from. The guards told Kleinerman it was just an interview. And I said, no, thank you, and started to walk away. And he said, excuse me, sir, you can participate in the interview or I will have to call the police. I, I began to feel like a criminal. Especially when they wrote down his birth date, height, hair color. It was just horrible to sit there for the 40 minutes talking with them getting no answers as to why I was there. And I mean, to this day, still don't really have answers as to why they stopped me. I'm Janet Napolitano, Secretary of the Department of Homeland Security. Homeland Security begins with hometown security. Ever since 9-11, the nation's leaders have created voluntary programs with names like See Something, Say Something and the Nationwide Suspicious Activity Reporting Initiative. John Cohen helps run the counterterrorism programs at the Department of Homeland Security. So what do we know? We know that domestic and foreign terrorist organizations uh, have an interest in carrying out attacks in this country, targeting locations where large numbers of people congregate. That includes hotels, sports stadiums, and even shopping malls. We all share the responsibility to fight terror and criminal misconduct. The Mall of America launched its program to help spot terrorists six years ago. Their program gets widely cited as a model. Maureen Bausch is vice president of the Mall. Well, I think our name, first of all, Mall of America, is attractive to people that want to hurt America. Government officials have, have asked us always since 9-11 to be on the watch. And we wanted to find out exactly who is on the watch across the country. NPR and the Center for Investigative Reporting asked 29 law enforcement agencies to send us reports about suspicious activities in their areas. The only officials who did were in Minnesota. They sent reports from the Mall of America. They show whom the mall found suspicious, people like Brad Kleinerman. The mall sent this 15-page report about him to the Bloomington Police Department. I was dumbfounded that there, this report existed. The mall's guards wrote that Kleinerman walked nervously through the mall. They said he looked at two of them closely, which was very odd. He had a defensive body posture. Their conclusion, Kleinerman is a suspicious person. I don't think I'm a suspicious person. A mall official told us they question a thousand suspicious people every year. They've reported more than a hundred of them to the police. If somebody stopped for shopping at the mall, ends up in a police database as a suspicious person. I think that's wrong. <laughs> I'm not real sure I'd go to the mall. I mean, they might accuse me of being a terrorist. Dale Watson used to run the counterterrorism program at the FBI during the Bush administration. It seems like we've moved from reasonable suspicion to let's look at everything. I mean, if somebody's in buying ammonia nitrate out in Pennsylvania in a rural place in a rental truck, you know, and the owner's never seen them before, putting it in plastic barrels, I'd say, yeah, that's a suspicious activity that should be reported. But many reports from the Mall of America target seemingly ordinary behavior. For instance, the guards reported one man to police because he was writing things down on a notepad and might be conducting surveillance. Turns out he was a musician waiting for a friend. They reported another man because he wore a backpack and walked with one hand inside his back pocket. And look what happened to Najam Qureshi and his wife, Huma Yusuf, near Minneapolis. Qureshi was born in Pakistan, but he's been a U.S. citizen since he was a teenager. One morning in January 2007, 
they got a shock. So the doorbell bell rings and a husband's taking a shower and there's this guy with a badge and says, I work for the FBI. And, you know, and I was like, really? And I could see a big, thick folder in his hand with my name on it. So I'm like, what is it all about? And he basically says, oh, it's nothing. We're just following up on a story that, you know, the mall personnel told us about that your dad uh, was in an incident. A few weeks before, Qureshi's father accidentally left his cell phone in the Mall of America's food court. When he wandered back to find it, the mall's guards peppered him with questions. He had forgotten his cell phone. Like, that's not a big deal. He's a 70-year-old man. I barely called that an incident. But the mall's guards worried about the phone because it was an unattended item. And they said Qureshi's father had a nervous demeanor. So they sent an 11-page report about the incident to the local police. And documents show that in turn, the police sent half the mall's reports to state and federal law enforcement. So now an FBI agent was investigating Qureshi himself. He asked me if I knew anybody in Afghanistan, <laughs> which I thought was hilarious. Um, do you? Uh, no, I don't. He said, do you know anybody who was involved in uh, terrorism activities? My reaction in my mind was, how dare this guy in my house come and say this? Officials at the FBI and Justice Department wouldn't comment. The mall's executives wouldn't talk about Qureshi or any specific case. You're talking to a handful of people, and it's very unfortunate that they did not have a good experience here. And we're, we're upset anyone doesn't have a good experience. Unfortunately, the world has changed, and we're doing the best we can to keep this building safe. I, I didn't talk to the, well, obviously I didn't talk to this lady, but I think if you look at it from certainly a law enforcement perspective that I bring, I would say the value of what I've seen here is absolutely not worth the effort. And it's certainly not worth the effort to have these individuals have become some type of police record. Back at Homeland Security, John Cohen says the nationwide push to report suspicious activities is working. Yes, it's definitely working, and it's working on several fronts. Cohen says suspicious activity reports from places like the mall have already foiled attacks. He cites the attempted bombing in Times Square. Where a suspicious activity report that went to the New York State Fusion Center by a AAA uh, representative um, helped lead to the identification of the individual uh, who commit, tried to commit the Times Square bombing. But other specialists say that report had nothing to do with preventing the bombing. It was lucky the bomb didn't go off. So I asked Cohen, when have programs like the Mall of America's helped avoid terrorist attacks? Um, I'm not going to get into specific cases because, you know, some of that information is, is obviously classified and there's ongoing investigations, but there are a large number of reports that have come in. Those reports are vetted, they're assessed, uh, and there have been a number of investigations, literally hundreds of terrorism investigations that have been opened and concluded as a result of those activities. Has the Mall of America or any other suspicious activity reporting system caught a potential terrorist? Not that I the... know of, not that I know of. Until last year, Juliet Kayyem was an assistant secretary of Homeland Security in the Obama administration. She says she hasn't heard Cohen's success stories. And as a trained intelligence person, right. you don't find this information valuable? Not from what I can see. Kayyem says, in theory, it's a great idea for businesses to report suspicious activities. But in the real world, the guards who do the reporting on the front lines are often not well trained. You have just a tremendous amount of information going into the intelligence sharing apparatus in the hopes that it will either you know, come up with terrorism or suspicious activity or criminal activity. To ensure that you're going to connect the dots better, right, one clear way is make sure the dots are better. Um, there's too many dots right now. Since the World Trade Towers came tumbling down, there's been a question mark over the war on terror. Can the government track down and stop terrorists and preserve the heart of America's democracy? The administration says yes. We don't want law enforcement officers focusing on people simply because of their ethnicity, their religious background, or if they're exhibiting behaviors that are constitutionally protected. What we all agree upon, we do want, are officers to be trained in the behaviors and indicators associated with a threat, behaviors and indicators associated with criminal activity, and focus their time and attention on those individuals. But people like Dale Watson worry that programs like the Mall of America's might violate those principles. I see a, a pattern here where American citizens are being suspected of something without any legal standards. Over the decades, 
court decisions have spelled out, when can a policeman search you, detain you? Watson says programs like the Mall of America's could push the country in the wrong direction. The heck with the uh, Bill of Rights and the Constitution. Let's just stop all of this stuff, okay? So if I'm driving down the street and I'm a police officer, if I want to stop you, I'll just stop you. Or if I see you wearing a red coat, maybe I think you're a communist in the old communist days, and so I'll take you to jail and hold you for 24 hours. That is not what we are. Najam Qureshi says what happened to him has changed him. It shattered an image of, uh, of the U.S. that I had, <laughs> fundamentally. Uh, growing up, you know, it was also my dad saying, you know, oh, you know, you're protected in this country, and this would never happen in this country. It's something that shouldn't be, not in this country. Daniel's Wordlings reporting on this subject continues tomorrow on NPR's Morning Edition. And tomorrow night, Tom Bearden reports on how life has changed for air travelers in the last decade.